Bat Dolphin Man. I like it. I like it. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. I'm Kyle. And this is the Concept Crucible Podcast. And today, we're talking about... Oh, uh, the things that keep me large and... Wait, bread makes you fat? Carbs, man. Oh. A killer. So many carbs! Nobody picks up my Six Scott Pilgrim reference, but... No, we're talking about baking. So, bread and biscuits and desserts and... Pancakes, because we sort of—I sort of sectioned pancakes and waffles into baking for reasons <laughs> yeah. which will eventually become clear. Uh, icebreaker. What is your favorite thing to bake, Kyle? We made you go first on your last one, so we'll, we won't make you go first on this one. Although you are arguably, and by arguably, I mean a hundred percent, definitely the most proficient baker in this room. I think it's amazing you added an extra syllable to arguably. If you go back and listen to that, you added an extra syllable to that when you said that. That was sure. amazing. I'm an I have the best words. That's like the one time a drunk friend added extra syllables to Protestant. Somehow. Protestant? I don't know. She saw I can't even replicate it, but she somehow managed to try to say Protestant and ended up dropping in a like two or three extra syllables. Sweet. Anyway, what is your favorite thing to bake? My, is it your friends? My favorite thing to bake. Um, and it's not just because it's easy, because it really is, but my stepmom's banana bread. I mean, mm. I, I have I always have bananas at the house, and I very rarely eat them fast enough, but I also sometimes am motivated to just let them start to over-ripen, like over, over, over-ripen, and then turn it into to banana bread. Um, and I like experimenting with it. Um, I like adding walnuts. Um, I like adding chocolate chips, vanilla extract. My favorite was um, uh, I inherited a series of spices when my stepmom cleaned out her kitchen. And, As one does. Yeah, and I got a one of those pre-made spice combinations that from oh. like the Pampered yeah. Chef or something like that. And it was a pumpkin spice one. Ooh. And Ooh. you know what? Yeah. For as much fun as the internet makes fun of pumpkin spice... That pumpkin was a spice banana bread. It was a pumpkin spice banana bread, and oh, it was man. very good. Pumpkin spice is delicious. I, I have no problem with it. Yeah. So, uh, banana bread is my favorite. Fair. Kyle, uh, I have my more general answer would be anything that involves chocolate. Fair. Um, Fair. You can explain if you want. <laughs> yeah. So Kyle and I went to school together, um, and Kyle, and, and in addition to living together for a while, and Kyle's. Um, particular brand of stress baking like around midterm or final time yep. lent itself to just piles of brownies and chocolate chip cookies yes, appearing. Absolutely. It's basically great. Like, honestly, I'm not going to say that stressed out Kyle is my favorite Kyle, <laughs> but he's not my no. least favorite <laughs> Kyle either. Um, but yeah, any anything yeah. with chocolate. But more more specifically, yeah. do you have do you have anything that is your favorite thing to bake? Um, not in particular. I mean, I, I do a lot of brownie uh, recipes uh, because I like experimenting in the same way you do with uh, different stuff. Uh, even if it's not necessarily with chocolate, like I've made uh, carob brownies. Mm -hmm. uh, I was, well. I was gonna yeah, I was gonna get you to clarify um, that whole like experimenting with brownies thing. yeah precisely so i mean it could be just like you know adding uh, ancho chili pepper to uh, uh chocolate recipes or brownie recipes which you should do by the way because it's awesome um but also you know is there a chocolate substitute for those uh who might not want to have who wants a brownie but doesn't want to have the chocolate mm -hmm. carob neat um, so, anticipating a question from the comments on twitter do you make quote special brownies? no god no all right I have certainly never had any that you have made, uh, if you have made any. I No, I do not make special <laughs> brownies. No. Uh, my favorite thing to make is entirely, like, vastly more boring. Uh, my favorite thing... I am I am an awful baker. I, I don't like doing it, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, is drop biscuits. Where you just, like, you make some dough, and you, like... Put some things in it. And by things, I, of course, mean cheese. 
and you plop it onto a cookie sheet and bake it for however long and it comes out you bust it in half you put butter on it and it's great (laughs) that is the limit of my baking skill right there it's just like drop a thing from a spoon stuff some cheese inside it throw it in the oven and wish you know that video of the guy who wakes up and he realizes he's late and he's yelling, fuck, but they cut it together with a bunch of things that he's doing to get ready to like go to work and then work and then come home and go back to sleep. I don't, but no. I, I can imagine it. I, I can imagine we should film a video one time where you do something similar, except it's like an angry, like, ah, while you're making the, the things, like you're rolling out the, or you're like mixing but like up I the find pop. every piece of the experience pleasant. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like, the, the, it gets like a very, like... Simple, non finesse, almost like macho, like you're just plopping it on there, throwing it in there, letting it bake for however long, take it out, rip it in half, throw some butter on it. So I could just imagine just like, ah, oh, like and it's super cut together with a bunch of stuff, and then, ah, and then finally, like, hmm. I have a much better manly baking idea that I will I will pitch to you afterward. All right. Haley and I came up with it one night when she was baking. Pantless baking? I do that a lot. Mm, no, manlier than that still. Okay, because that's baking my favorite. Baking? Mm, even manlier. <laughs> but my, my as a vegetarian, bake. I'm not really down for that one anymore. No, but there, there's vegetarian bacon, which, as you know, is delicious. Oh, <laughs> vegetarian bacon is horrible. <laughs> is, it, is it more horrible than vegan cheese? No. Okay, so there we go. We have at least a hierarchy of... of I, to be fair, I've only tried one kind of vegan cheese. Mm. But, uh, no, I, I I detest baking because baking is basically fucking sorcery. Like, I love cooking. Like, you throw a bunch of stuff in a pan, you mix it around, you can see it as it happens, or in a pot. You can stir it, you can taste it. At every stage of creating this thing, you have access to it both visually auditorily um like factory old factory yes thank you you can you can smell it you can i mean and you can inspect it to make sure that it's done exactly the way you want you could taste it as much as you need to and be like yeah i mean you know no matter what you're making you can you can cut off a piece of it or whatever and you can be like yeah we're almost there or you know we're a little far off and with baking you can't you just like mix together a bunch of stuff in a way that apparently makes sense to you. Although I would argue that if you know what the batter should taste like, uh, which will translate into the final product, mm-hmm. then you could do it that way. Perhaps it'll be like, "Ooh, this is perfect," or "No, it needs more sugar, or salt, whatever." There whatever. are many situations um, in which, if you know how a thing needs to be to to turn out correctly, then it will turn out correctly. Mm-hmm. But with cooking, you can learn how it needs to be while you're doing it. Yes. With baking, it's always like, okay, here's this thing I made. What are you going to do? Put it in the oven and wish. <laughs> turn oven to bake or apparently broil. No, don't turn it to broil. No, don't turn it to broil. Don't Broiling is a, yeah. is a whole separate podcast, yeah. I think. Yeah. But turn it to bake. Set the, set the temperature. Walk away. Wait. But don't wait too long. That is, and that is the part that always gets me is like the, the 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 don't wait too long. Or I like I, I will always like pull something out early, or I will leave it for too long because I will forget about it. Well, there's the whole insert the toothpick in, or what? in my kit, you know, like you insert the toothpick, and if it comes out clean, then it's good. What? But that is a baking thing. That it, is, it is a baking thing. That is a baking thing where you... you uh, in my case, I usually use a butter knife because I, I seldom have toothpicks. Uh, however, it's like if you have a toothpick and you're baking a cake... Um, when Stab you, that cake like it's a shark and you're a jet? Well, you, you insert the toothpick in... Like once the cake is supposed to be done, for example. Uh-huh. You stick the toothpick in the cake. If it comes out clean, there's no batter sticking to it, then it is done. You know oh. it is done. That, that is a, a Baking 101 learning tip. Well, shit, yeah. I skipped Baking 101. <laughs> no, I mean, so, as someone who, who doesn't like baking, how did you get started baking? Uh, Open question uh, to the floor. Sure. Uh, I guess I'll sure. start. Um, <laughs> so, my baking experience came a little bit from my mother. 
Um, it was, um, but in my mother's case, it was mostly prep. So learning the basics of, of prepping food and whatnot in the kitchen. And I use that in a light sense. It was mostly like peeling potatoes or grating potatoes, which is not baking, but you know, you know what I mean? Um, and then my baking prowess, I largely connect with my grandmother who I did a little bit of assistance in the kitchen with her. Like when she'd make, um... I guess they'd just be buns. Uh, she's Czech, so she called them another thing. But uh, it's largely just like a, uh, a nice bun that has, you take three strands of dough and then you, you braid it together, which is also conveniently how I learned how to braid hair, <laughs> was from learning how to braid dough. <laughs> um, but, but anyways, uh, I think she calls them hoskies or something like that. So, um, But also like kneading dough and whatnot. So... I learned how to knead dough um, a little bit from her trying to teach me, but, you know, when I was younger, my hands were smaller, I didn't have the strength and whatnot to do it, and then I described it to, to the guys in, in the pre-show that when I finally understood how to do it, I, I was making bread on my own for the first time, and I just started to mimic the hand motions that my grandmother would do to try to knead the bread. And then it all just, it was like a skill set unlocked for me. And it suddenly <laughs> all made sense, which conveniently, the same movements I, I use to, to knead dough, I use when I give people massages. And they, I get really positive feedback on it. <laughs> so there's a, there's a domain transfer of skills. Wait, wait, wait. But go back to the part where you were like braiding dough. Do you like braid people's backs? 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 I don't know, when you're giving a back massage? No, no, no. No, no, that would be braiding hair. I mean, I never did it to myself because I wasn't talented enough when I had long hair to braid my own hair, but, Mm -hmm. like, I've been challenged before, like, you're a guy, what do you know about braiding hair? And it's like, braid my hair. It's like, okay. Uh, I mean, it wasn't clean. (laughs) I'm not practiced, but I know... And you learn from braiding bread. From Yeah, braiding bread. Oh, wow. Wow. So that that's where I got started with baking, and then from there I just experiment. Yeah, I mean, same thing with me. You know, from learning from parents, um, more so my mom for, with the baking aspect. Um, you know, watching her make whatever it was. Uh, in, growing up for me, it was a, a lot of uh, most of the dishes that I watched were like pancakes, since we're lumping pancake making yep. in yep. the baking. Uh, so pancakes, um, but also like marble cake and, um, apple crumble cake, um, because, uh, this explains your position as dessert Lord. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, uh, a lot of the stuff that I watched was somewhat over the top because my mom was really particular with stuff. Like she, she, my mom's a a fussy baker and a fussy cooker Mm -hmm. where things must be perfect. And if it's not, she will not let you take, like have it until it is perfect. Uh. Um, so I learned a lot of my, I guess, skills from watching her. I guess there's, there's yeah, that, that, early, that sort of early age get comfortable around food and food preparation that's sort of really important. And I definitely got that. Like, I love cooking, but baking, it's basically magic. Like, <laughs> it's, it's like chemistry. It is chemistry, essentially. Mm-hmm. You're waiting for this reaction to occur. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it occurs... In a, in a manner that is almost completely independent from you. Whereas cooking, you can mess with it like while it's happening. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, and like that's one of the reasons why I really like baking is the sort of chemistry aspect. I mean, I, I do have a degree in science. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I, I have that sort of scientific background where it's like you, you like throwing things together and see seeing what happens and like the the good thing about baking is you don't see only see what happens but you also get to eat it yeah but um, the downside is that if, if it's, it's awful yeah if you it's, have to eat it yeah well if it's awful then yeah you, you you don't do that again though it's a learning experience in that yeah. way too um but for me it's uh, like i like going down the international aisle in the grocery store and being like oh what is this i've never seen this before what can I do with it? Mm. Um, and like that's how I got introduced to Carib. Um, I was in Bulk Bar, and it was like, "What is this? How do you use it?" And it was like, "It's a, it's a like a cocoa or chocolate substitute. That's really weird, but really cool. You know, what can I do with it? Brownies, maybe." Um, yeah, it's it's. I guess like one of the big do's of baking is don't or, or is is like do experiment as much as you can. Yeah, and it. it I, I imagine it makes you sort of culinarily braver. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, I, I've totally tried to make like a like a total failure of bread where it was like lemon and paprika in bread, which of course does not sound appetizing whatsoever. Uh, I don't know. It's one of those things where it's like, what were you thinking, Kyle? That's awful. So I will point out that <laughs> last week, uh, prior to recording, Kyle also made a failure bread, which was um, yeah. braided bread dough that he made himself from yeah. scratch yeah. Um, mixed with uh, jam? What kind of jam was it? Like uh, uh, rhubarb, rhubarb, jam. rhubarb, rhubarb jam. jam, and like pa- glazed with egg. Like on yeah, the yeah, top. with an egg wash. On top yeah, too. egg wash. That's the word I was looking for. I'm I'm not a bakesman. I don't know anything about this stuff. And I was I I, I came in the kitchen from D and D, and I'm like, hey man, what's up? And he's like, oh, I made this failure bread, and I look at this bread, and it looks amazing. <laughs> like it's it's this like. Six pointed star of bread that is delicately brown on the top, and sort of bits of sweetness poking out of it. And I'm like, "Really?" And he's like, "Yeah. Do you want some?" I'm like, "Yeah, I do now." So I take a piece and I try it, and it's fucking awesome. Like I am disinclined to yeah. believe, sir, that your failures <laughs> are anything. Yeah. So, but see, again, me... that's where it comes from. My mom, right? You know, the whole like failure because it's not up to what I was thinking it would be, and so therefore it's automatically not a good thing. You know, let like, me tell you so. about a failure <laughs> um, that also involves a do or don't, which is do get the right ingredients at least at the basic level. Uh, when I was about twelve, uh, I had a big brother. Uh, through Big Brothers Canada. And uh, we were at my house, and one of us had decided to make cookies, and I don't actually remember which one it was. I don't think it was me, though, because baking was not really going to be my idea at 12. But we're making cookies, and uh, chocolate chip cookies, because those are the only real kind of cookies when you're 12. Basically, I mean, that you can make in an oven that are easy. Because it's just like eggs and flour and sugar and... So, but I didn't have any flour. And, like, looking back at this as an adult, I'm like, why did my big brother not just, like... Why did we not just hop out to the store, get some flour, come back? For a chocolate chip cookies amount of flour, it's basically, like, a dollar. It's dirt cheap. Why did we not do that? Instead, what we did, at his behest... It was uh, it was use cornstarch because he's like it's just like flour. I'm like I I don't think it's like flour. He's like it's just like flour. Don't worry about it. And I'm like <laughs> I'm twelve. You're a grown up. What do I know? Turns out I was a twelve year old genius. <laughs> Seriously, those cookies, in addition to being slightly burnt, were the worst. I know that during the food podcast, I talked about the lentil soup I made that was vegetarian breakfast cereal, and that was that was all the cookies were, were the cookies were even worse because they had perfectly good chocolate chips in them, <laughs> and because twelve year old Jim had made them, they had a lot of perfectly good chocolate chips in them, and you would see them, and you would see those chocolate chips, and you would be like chocolate chips. I know that you need to be eaten, and you would take up a cookie, and you're like, oh, it's probably not that bad. I will help these chocolate chips get to their destiny. And you would put the cookie in your mouth. And you would experience regret. And then sadness. And you would reluctantly swallow and attempt to find something to wash it down with. And you would look at the rest of the cookies and be like, I wish to lead you home. (laughs) And I was very sad for those chocolate chips. And I still regret... That they, many of them were wasted because 12 year old Jim, I think, ate like half a tray of cookies and was like, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot help any more of you. I have done all I can. And no one else would touch those cookies because they'd have like one or they'd just smell them and be like, what the fuck? I almost want to try making them just to know what you're talking about because, like, I can't help but to think, um, like, cornstarch and water uh, creates that kind of proxy for a Newtonian solid. You know the Basically. the 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 thing that uh, it's like when you apply force to it, it reacts like a solid. You can shape it like a solid, but it silly melts. putty. No, no, but this one, but it, it doesn't like it doesn't actually like shape into anything three dimensional. But it, like if you clump it into a ball and then release it, it, it melts. Mm-hmm. Um, 
it was a lot of fun to play with. Now add kid. eggs, sugar, and chocolate and chocolate chips. Yeah, so I'm just I'm almost curious. I wanna wanna try making it. Just all right, well, upcoming baking vlog at some point. I'm sure. Just a very small, limited run batch. Yeah. Oh man, but no, it was it was one of those things that taught me that. Like, if I am going to bake anything, I'm going to definitely have the right ingredients. Like, even if you get... Because, like, what you're talking about, Kyle, is, like, you can get the proportions off and still have something come out good. Mm -hmm. You can experiment once you've got your, like, basics in place. But if you fuck with one of those basics, Mm -hmm. you're done. You don't even know. But, like, for me, that's also kind of... uh, Screwing with the basics is kind of fun, too. Uh, I've done that where... Uh, like for example, a cookie, a, a generic cookie recipe for chocolate chip cookies, for example, usually requires one egg. Um, but you can, if you don't have an egg, what are you going to do? You're going to go and Google and look to, up substitutes. No, I'm going um, to go to the store yes, and buy yes. eggs. No, I, but what I'm trying to say is, like, I I can't remember whether it was cornstarch in water or cream of, cream of tartar in water with some cornstarch. Anyway, I I made a substitution for the one egg, and like I did the uh, the the cream of tartar water thing and it worked out magnificently like, we're not all food cookies. wizards kyle we can't do that <laughs> uh, also flaxseed and water works uh and mm-hmm. the best fun vegan substitution for cookies banana one banana substitutes oh, as oh no, i have to disagree so my no. my my former roommate he wanted to make cookies and he knew that i love bananas so he took a recipe and then modified it with bananas Oh my god, they were like the best cookies ever. So, I've tried oh, the well, banana substitution several times. Food Gandalf no. and Oven Saruman are disagreeing <laughs> over here. Oh no, I, like I, I, this uh, is the I've, conversation I've, I've, I've tried the banana substitute several times because I, I, come on, it's got to work somehow. Nope, never works for me. I have no idea so. what you're talking about. Like, I, I don't understand the first thing. I'm like, the, the, the notion that I would substitute a banana for an egg. That would make me well, the no, worst my, omelet it's in the It's because you got to know world. what the eggs. The egg is a binding agent. Yes. you need something that helps hold the other things together. So that's why not just use white glue, guys? <laughs> I mean, it does. It does kind of fill that role. But that's like when it comes to the do's and don'ts. It's kind of like it's kind of like writing essays and whatnot. You can break the rules as long yeah. as you know what the original rules intended to do. So, like, if you know that an egg is a binding agent mm-hmm. and you want to substitute something for it, you just need to find a proxy binding agent. It's it's in the same way I keep arguing with, with Sarah where she says, no, you have to follow a recipe exactly. It's like, no, I mean, there are things that you need to get in the right ratios and you need to mix them in the right way sometimes in order to facilitate a chemical see, reaction. That's, no, that, see, that's what, that's what I love about cooking is that cooking I can adjust on the fly. So if I, for example, accidentally crack a banana into my stir fry instead of an egg, <laughs> I can be like, shit, I cracked a banana in there. I try it and I sort of see and I'm like, well, what's going to balance out banana flavor? Maybe more hot sauce or more soy sauce, add more savory to mm-hmm. it and then get in there and maybe I'm also going to throw an egg in there for protein yeah. and then and then it's going to turn out yummy and I can do that on the fly. Again, with baking, you're just like, yeah, put a banana in here. Oh well, yeah, baking is throw it like, in the oven and wish. Baking can be <laughs> slightly less forgiving than cooking. Like yes. there are, in cooking, you yeah. can you can grossly mess up things like if you're sweating some onions and putting a little bit of garlic in there you can't leave the garlic overheat very long otherwise they like really brown and then get crisp and stuff and then it's just not good mm-hmm. but, so yeah you, and then but then you can mask that in cooking baking sometimes it's harder to get away with hiding those those little errors fair 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 um there are also i we learned in the pre-show um there are definite quirks to baking uh for example kyle and Ryan, resident food wizards, are both wrong on the subject of raisins. <laughs> raisins, you may not be familiar with them, are amazing. They're dehydrated grapes. They're like everything that's in grapes, only better and more bite-sized. Because you can easily fit a handful of them in your mouth without looking like some kind of gluttonous Roman emperor. <laughs> yes. Right? Yeah. Raisins are, of course, at their peak inside butter tarts. No, yeah. absolutely not. As I said, wrong about raisins. There, there's absolutely nothing wrong with grapes. Um, they're wonderful. They're magnificent. They can be used to Juicy. make wonderful things. Yeah, um, wine, but grapes 
turned into raisins. I just I can't do it. I gag. No. I gag. It's like the sun made ma- the sun made raisin lady is so misleading. It's like look sunlight and wonderful things, and then you, in the, the box fuck? you have these like little. What the fuck do you think raisins come from? You leave a bunch of grapes in the sun. Sun dried tomatoes. No, amazing. But, Love yeah. them. But grapes just are like they're like. They're like she just, promises nothing. They're little dark, shriveled up ball sacks. I can't. <laughs> they're just a, not appealing. Put the ball sacks in your porridge. I tr- that's why I mean it was instant oatmeal but I, I that's where I got my revulsion from I tried eating um, you know Quaker instant oatmeal as a kid and for some reason I just started gagging I want some right now for example and you even agreed that if if you have a cookie and then you bite into it and it turns out the chocolate chip cookie was a raisin cookie it okay. is the most okay. disappointing thing chocolate chips are in the world. Like, all, like, like let's be completely honest there's almost nothing that chocolate chips wouldn't improve that's where double chocolate chip and chocolate cookies come from. Is someone's like, damn, I made this chocolate cookie batter, but you know what I need? It's chocolate chips in this motherfucking cookie. Like, that is where chocolate like double chocolate cookies come from, is the chocolate chips make everything better. Like chocolate chips and porridge would be amazing. It'd be like chocolate chips and pancakes. Yeah. Which are also awesome. I, yes. I personally prefer banana pancakes, but yeah. Dice up. That's one thing I also that's one wrong the thing about pancakes. At. Yeah. No, I don't, raisins are amazing. I don't know, no. especially in butter tarts. Which, which as I no, they make butter. They make butter tarts un-Canadian if you add them. That seems fine. I'm not restricted by petty nationalism <laughs> when it comes to enjoying butter tarts. It's, it's benign nationalism. It's petty. I like butter oh. tarts just as they are. I mean, I you and I disagree because I do like pick them with pecans. I mean, it's not like I prefer them with mm-hmm. pecans on them, but I, I find it perfectly acceptable uh, to have yeah, I, I also want. like butter tarts as they are, and as they are is with raisins. No. no, But, like, no, like, as a kid, I actually didn't realize that, like, pecan pie, quote-unquote, is basically just a butter tart with pecans. Yeah. Butter tart writ large. And because, yeah. like, I lo- like, I like butter tarts. Those were so good. But pecan pie, oh, God, like, get that away from oh, me. pecan pie is amazing. But they're the same thing. It's just that pecan pie ha- is a butter tart with pecans exactly. in them. It's, it's like it's a awful. butter tart. It, it, it only destroys the dessert completely. No. no, you're so wrong. I mean, it is interesting. You're right, though, that, that, it is, uh, that raisins and butter tarts is an English and Scottish thing. Canadian butter tarts don't typically have raisins in them. Which makes them, of course, worse. Um, no. But there are all kinds of other like weird Canadian baking things, like beaver tails. Yes. Which I don't even remember what a beaver tail is. <laughs> it's well, it's kind of like a uh, a pastry. Like yeah. a, I, I don't even know what kind of pastry. It's hard to describe. But anyway, I mean, it's compared got, to like funnel cake. Yeah, kind of like that sort of. It's like a. But anyway, it's like um, it's Air. basically it's it's flat mm-hmm. uh, and it's deep fried. I think. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's flat deep fried dough. Uh, and then it's like once you take it out, it's still kind of wet, and you put it in cinnamon sugar. You don't yeah. get it in cinnamon yeah. sugar. Yeah, it's uh, like an airier, crispier yeah. uh, pancake yeah. batter, I think. Um, or Nanaimo bars, which come from Nanaimo in BC, Yeah, which lots of people like. I kind of like. I, they're I, extreme. Like, you can only have, like, half <laughs> of one because they're extremely uh, sweet. Mm-hmm. I like the idea of... Of Nanaimo bars, like any time they're on a dessert platter or something. Mm-hmm. Yes, and like well, they're, they're, we, they're visually appealing. Too, when we went yeah. to university, like they were always on there, and they were like the one thing that just topped with chocolate. And you're like, oh, yeah. well, we should probably describe what Nanaimo they are because it's like I don't actually know how to describe what a Nanaimo bar is. Uh, well, it's a three layered dessert where the top layer is typically just like semi sweet chocolate that's been melted. Yeah, and then the middle um, layer is it, the Nanaimo. The middle layer is like a cream layer. Which yeah, is the Nanaimo layer? I uh, have never heard of a Nanaimo layer before. I don't know. Um, so anyway, so that's the second layer. It's just like a cream layer. And then the, the bottom layer the is The bottom layer is the Nanaimo layer. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, for, yes. Sure. At some point, there's um, got to be some Nanaimo. Or the whole bar. thing is... Uh, I don't know. But uh, anyway, the, the bottom layer is like another chocolate layer. That's like chocolate and oatmeal or chocolate and uh, coconut flakes. Mm. Um yeah, and you know, like I don't know, I love the idea of them, and and yeah. you get the little tiny bite sized ones where they like cut a, a real size one into four, and you like put it in your mouth, and you're like, oh, this is really yummy for like three seconds, and you're like, it's still here in my mouth. I'm done with this now. I guess I'll swallow it. Which they're really good, 
But yeah, I I am also a person who doesn't like really really sweet things. So um that I guess is 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 a burden I have to bear. But yeah, and I'm a bars, beaver tails. What was the other Canadian baking thing that we we had thought of? I can't remember now. Well, basically anything that contains maple syrup would be Yeah. Um, I mean, like yeah. we were we're famous for like this sort of uh maple cookies. Um <laughs> <laughs> which are typically like a maple a maple cookie like shortbread ish kind of thing yeah um and then maple cream in the middle and then another one so it's like a set like an oreo kind of thing but in the shape of course of a maple leaf so so we had a um, guest we had a fan visit us from scotland uh back in august and he he texted me when he got back to the airport and got on the plane. He's like, I finally found these cookies that my mom has been looking for. She said, you have to promise to bring me back these cookies. And he's like, I finally found them like in the airport. And I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, like the Canada cookies. I'm like, what are you talking about? The Canada cookies. Please text me a picture of them. I have no idea what you're talking about. Oreo cookies, Oreo cookies, Oreo cookies. No, those are American cookies. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, but I'm, I'm like waiting for... No, like... the Canada cookies, they look like maple leaves and they have maple flavor. <laughs> I'm like, really? You were here for two weeks and you never saw any? Like, I can't throw a rock without hitting a box of those goddamn cookies yeah. in this country. Yeah. And they're they're so delicious. Especially the Girl Scouts. But they are exclusively Canada cookies, apparently. yeah. yeah. So weird, but yeah, he had to he had to like at the airport. I'm like, we could have gone anywhere and gotten those, <laughs> literally anywhere. I don't know. It's weird. It's weird to think uh, that that every country has its own baking colloquial stuff, but at the same time, it is not that weird and seems entirely probable given that people have been, been baking in every country for centuries upon centuries, refining recipes and changing them and. Mm-hmm. And it's only now that we're able to learn about all of those recipes and try them. Like you love trying international recipes, okay, yeah. And you're always Huck. You're always making bread from weird places, and I am always making basically the same thing, only more of it. <laughs> Listen, I'm not a food wizard. You're a food hobbit. Yeah, I'm a food hobbit. I'm just sort of taking my food to Mount Doom continuously. <sighs> I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. I'm Kyle. We're signing off. Throw it in the oven and wish. Jesus. Are you fucking part Velociraptor or something? (laughs) No, I'm practicing for the day that I'm blinded by um, toxic waste. And I've been exercising, so I'll be able to use echolocation to fight bad guys in crime by night.